Hi, welcome once again to the introduction to Lattice QCD. Today we're going to talk about a few more advanced concepts building on the jackknife that we studied earlier. First thing that we're going to talk about is something called autocorrelation. When we take data in a lattice simulation using our Monte Carlo Markov chain method, each of the configurations in our ensemble is generated by modifying the configuration that came before it in Monte Carlo time. That means that the two configurations may not be as different as we'd like them to be in order to fully sample our space. That is, the configuration that we're considering may be related to the configuration that comes before it, or two before it, or in fact, for a long time between configurations. The measure that we have to determine how related two of these things are is the autocorrelation, the relationship of a quantity with itself, but at a different Monte Carlo time. The true variance of the observable that we'd like to find out is going to depend on how correlated the data is. So the true variance, which we denote by sigma squared of the observable, is defined to be twice something called the autocorrelation time plus one times the naive variance, that is what you would get if you use the jackknife procedure that we discussed earlier. So you can see if the autocorrelation time is zero, that is our configurations are perfectly uncorrelated, then we have no problem because this prefactor goes to one. And as the autocorrelation time becomes longer and longer, then we are going to get a more and more disappointing uh, true variance compared to our naive variance. So let's take a look at how we can calculate that quantity tau a, the autocorrelation time. The definition of this is it's the sum over all Monte Carlo times from one to infinity of this quantity that we call a autocorrelation. This is somewhat complicated, so let's break it apart. In the numerator, we have the fluctuation of the observable. So here's the observable, some time t naught. We want to find the difference of that from its mean. The mean is just here. So this is how much our observable is fluctuating relative to the mean. That should look familiar from standard deviation kinds of uh, calculations. And then we're going to compare that to the fluctuation in the observable at a different later Monte Carlo time. So t naught plus t, the observable at that, compared to its mean. So what we're looking at here is if the observable is fluctuating, say, higher at a particular time, and we notice that at a later time it's also fluctuating higher, and when this is lower at a time, we notice that later it is also fluctuating lower. That means these two things are not moving up and down independently. They're moving together. They are correlated. They are autocorrelated. And so that amount of autocorrelation, we normalize it by how much this quantity normally fluctuates. We know how to calculate that. That's just the variance. And we call this ratio the autocorrelation. So we take that autocorrelation, we perform the sum, and we get an autocorrelation time. Sounds great, but measuring the autocorrelation is actually quite hard. And that's because this quantity A of t is actually really noisy. It's basically an error on an error. We're trying to measure how bad our measure of the variance is. And that's going to be difficult unless we have a very large amount of data. The convergence of this sum depends on some delicate cancellations. So our pragmatic approach is to just try to make our data independent. Instead of trying to do this actual scaling, we'll just block our data such that we think that the data outside of these blocks is so far apart that it's definitely greater than the autocorrelation time. How would we do that? Well, binning the data is a very simple procedure that reduces the autocorrelation. Here we have an example of what would happen if we wanted to bin our data by a factor of two. So we have the observable on the configuration at Monte Carlo time one. 
to, and so on, up to our n configurations. We take each set of two configurations that are adjacent to each other in Monte Carlo time, and we average over them. Obviously, we could do this same procedure, not for two, but for some larger number. But in this example, to make the diagram a little more simple, we've just used a factor of two. So we take these, we average them together, and we call this modified of binned observable with a twiddle one. What we should find is that the autocorrelation time of this observable is smaller than one, and that's what we hope to see.